So this is how it's came packaged. It's got some nice bit of foam on the top. And this is the Speedo itself. Looks, first impressions, looks really nice. Carefully do this. Yes, I thought it was. It's got a what would appear to be a glass front, got a real nice dome on it. Um, it's going to look pretty period against the other clocks because obviously white faced it'll all blend in quite nicely. I'd have preferred it if the hand had been black, but we can't have everything. Uh, my main concern is that the body of the Speedo and the chrome ring may be slightly undersized because the Speedo that I fitted originally is slightly larger than this. Not by much, but it doesn't have to be much to be a bad fit. So I may have to do something to negotiate that bad fit. We'll see anyway, but I'm happy with the overall look at it. What else have we got in the box? We've got a, a block connector and some wiring. So I could, I could hardwire this into the loom and then just connect that into the thing. Although it may be nicer to have that and just leave that plugged in rather than keep disconnecting it from the clock every time I want to take the whole binnacle out. It may just pay to have another standalone block connector. I think I'll probably do that actually. Yeah, I'll do that. I've convinced myself already. And in here, the antenna for the GPS. And it comes with a nice length of cable, 3.9 meters. A few people have said to me, or sort of encouraged me to not fit this. Um, I don't really, um, I can't really see reasons. Um, there are a few valid points some people made about it not being legal and stuff um, and inaccurate but I've read other port reports that said that they're very accurate so um, I, I appreciate it won't work in all circumstances like when you're going to lose a GPS signal or you lose your speedometer so um, what I thought I would do is I would take some advice that somebody said and they said about taking the stepper motor out of the binnacle, uh, out of the cluster, the forward cluster, transferring it into a carcass and then um, rescaling the numbers. I thought that's an absolutely fantastic idea because I still need the pulse, obviously, um, and I've already got the pulse. I don't really need to generate another pulse off the axle because I've already got a pulse going on. and. Um, I've got a little plan to maybe uh, get another cluster because they're in abundance down the scrapyard. Uh, just buy another cluster for a couple of quid and then uh, cut out cut out around the speedo keeping the stepper motor still attached to the back of the metalwork and then um, gut out one of these clocks and uh, rescale it and then I'll have a live speedo that's run off the van. So it'll be just like the original speedometer. And um, then if, if this one goes down, I've always got that one as a backup. I know it might seem a bit mad, but hey, you know, that's me all over, isn't it? So I might do that anyway. I might, I might not, I don't know yet. I'll get this mounted in, see if it works, see how well it works. And then I might have a bit of a play. It depends what time I've got. There's the Speedo. I think it looks really nice. It was about 50 quid off eBay. Uh, it was imported from China. And um, a lot of people knock this kind of stuff. But uh, a lot of the stuff that you buy in shops anyway has been made in China. People knock stuff from China. But uh, each to their own, I suppose. Thanks to everybody for your recommendations and advice on what to do with this speedo how you believe it's going to work i've scrapped my idea of 
putting the sensor on top of the roof. Uh, a lot of people have said that it won't be weatherproof for a start and uh, a few people have said it will work behind steel, other people said it won't, some said it has to be behind plastic or glass. Um, so I thought what I'd do is i just rig it up in the car. Uh, a, a fine chap I know called Andrew Thomas has always given me wonderful advice, said, well, Trevor, why don't you just plug it into the cigarette lighter so I can wire it into my cigarette lighter. And what I've done actually is I've wired it into this 9 volt battery because it draws hardly no current and the voltage range is between 9 volts and I think it's 23, 24 volts then it runs fine off this 9 volt battery which saves a lot of hassle and what I've done is I've mounted the sensor up underneath the sun visor so there is the sensor so it has to go through the roof so that's the sensor through the roof. I know this already works because I've already tried it out. So what I'll do is I'll connect the battery. Now, when I connected the battery, there's a timer on this that, that counts up. Apparently it counts all the way up to 300. If it gets to 300, it hasn't picked up a signal and then it just throws up error. Okay, it's just turned straight on. So it's just registering that I've done 12 miles. So I've already done 12 miles. So let's take it out for a test drive and I'll show you what I've already seen. And um, get that out of the way of the, the speedo. I know this isn't exactly the right thing to do, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll get somebody to help me with the camera work. I'm not gonna drive down the road with a camera trying to film this. Um, now I've also got my sat nav set up. So the sat nav's there and um, so we compare the speeds on the three and um, work something out and we'll see the characteristics of the speedo against the new um, GPS speedo. See that counter's going up there. That's it, it's found it. That was quick, it's found it already. Right, let's get it up to 40 on the speedo of the car. Right, we're, we're up to we're up to 40 and the speedo is reading slightly slower. Okay, we're at 40 now then George. So we're at 40 now. See, it takes a little time for the needle to catch up. Yeah. We've changed cars now just to do a comparison of, uh, you know, manufacturer speedo. And let's just see what the difference is. We're on a road, we can get up to 40 now. That's quickly. I'm at 40 now. You're at 40 now? Yeah. Just keep it at 40 then. Still at 40? Yep. It's bang on. It's hard to get it in a place where we haven't got a reflection. Yes. I would have said that's not far away. So we're at 40 now? Yeah. Bang on? Mm -hmm. It's just, if I had been really fussy, I would have said the needle's just, just shy of 40. That's bouncing all over the place. Still at 40? Slightly above now. That's 40 again. 40. That's all right. I'm happy with that. It's just slightly shy of 40 and it's not as responsive as a car speedo so if you accelerate quite fast 
then the needle takes some time to catch up. So you could catch yourself out by going faster, waiting for the needle to catch up. Bang on 40? Yep. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That would indicate that my car is registering that it's going faster than it actually is. Which would tally up more with the sat nav because this is closer to the sat nav and the sat nav registers that it's going slower than the car so that would tally up quite nicely. Still bang on 30? Yep. That's not too bad is it? Yeah. I nearly took a roundabout out there. Get to 20 and just stay at 20 if you can. Bang on 20? Yep. Yeah. That's 30? Yep. Yeah. That's pretty good George. So this is what the instruments look like at the moment and these were from a Willis Jeep uh, apart from the temperature one that was actually just a, a spurious cheapo gauge I bought and it had a black bezel on it and I swapped it around for an old Smith's gauge you know like out of a mini or something a lot of these gauges come with an orange hand which I already said I don't particularly like but a lot of these are sort of crimped on, so the bezels are crimped on, there's no way of getting into the gauge and it being a very easy fix to sort of paint the hand or whatever. Anyway, I'll just remove this, so I've unbolted it already. Now the worry is the new GPS speedo will be a little bit too small for the hole, which I knew it would be to start with, and it just doesn't sit in there properly. Fortunately, this old Willis speedo gauge comes with an L section uh, rubber fits underneath and this fits over the top of the GPS speedo really, really well. So, put that on there. It's got a, like an L sectioned seal that goes around it and this fits over the top of the GPS speedo really well and then that takes up the slack so that's a really really nice snug fit in there no problem at all don't like the orange hand still can't get it uh, can't get to the hand can't make any adjustments to the hand because the bezels crimped i noticed a lot of these gauges um obviously they're made for a cost they're not designed to come apart, put back together again, so you just got to sort of live with them really. Anyway, the seal pushes up against the bezel really, really well. And then the gauge, the gauge drops nice and snug. I actually have to force it into that hole and it's a nice snug fit then. So thank heavens I had that seal. That's saved me a lot of hassle. I prefer the colour of the white background. This white background matches in with the other, other gauges better than the original set did so I mean this this come like I said this come with the other gauges and none of them really matched and I think I think the whites are better match but I don't like the look obviously LCD isn't as nice orange um, orange hand isn't as nice um, could have been better if it had been 10 20, 30, 40, etc., rather than 20, 40, 60. Although I think I'm hoping, <laughs> I think I'm hoping that the um, van will cruise quite nicely at around about 60 miles an hour. Um, well, we'll see, won't we? I haven't sort of driven it very far up the road yet, so we'll soon find out. So let's get this wired in next. Got the speedo all bolted in properly and I wired it all the way round into the plug and I realised I'd done something uh, really silly because I can wire it internally into the binnacle and I don't need to have any cables going and then of course I've got to find extra feeds under the dash. 
So we have it all wired internally. I've got the switch live going to the battery terminal on the fuel gauge. I've got the earth going to the earth terminal on the fuel gauge. And I've got the light wired to the light coming off the fuel gauge. Like I say, the draw is very, very low, so it shouldn't create any issues. So I've just fitted the binnacle back in. I haven't tidied up the wiring harness. Just wanted to make sure all the electrics worked before I tidy everything up and put it into that split conduit. Um, yeah, so what I've done anyway is I fitted the speed sensor up here. Uh, obviously I can move it. I've just taped it into position. It's more or less in a horizontal position there. Behind the dash, it's so busy now. Um, I didn't really want to fit it there. I thought up here would be better out the way. And I just turned the ignition on. And the, yeah, it's working. The clocks, this clock's counting up. So that counts up to 300. If that gets to 300 and it hasn't picked up a signal, it just throws up an error code. It's done 27 miles, so it flicked to 27 miles if it was going to work. I don't really expect it to work because, um, you know, we're inside the garage. So the garage has got a steel roof. There's also a, a separate ceiling in the garage as well. So in order for it to work, it would have to go through the roof of the van and also the roof of the garage which is steel and through the ceiling and everything else that's in the way so I don't really expect to pick up a, a signal in here um, so that's it I need to take it for a test drive next get it outside see if I can pick up a signal and make sure it works properly if it does then I can tidy everything up double side tape perhaps or bond that to the ceiling or so I'll do something I'll do something uh, make sure it's more of a permanent fixture it's sort of out of the way there it's not really that visible and um, yeah that's it I'll wait and see what happens when I drive it down the road that'll be the next thing to do I just flick the camera off and as I flick the camera off unbelievably it's just found a signal so it's actually working inside of the garage which if it's working inside of the garage and it's picking up a signal from inside like I say through a tin roof on top of the garage sheets of plywood and plasterboard and through the metal roof of the van as well then it really really shouldn't struggle to pick a signal up outside of the garage I'm quite quite surprised that's actually working in here. You see, we're definitely inside still. Something I noticed in the middle of all of this is my oil pressure light stopped working. And I know the wiring's okay. So what I've done is I've traced it back to the old cluster. And what I'd done is I'd wired the bulb, so the bulb holder, the original bulb holder, I piggybacked off that and uh, that's that's just snapped off. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have a go at building some solder on the board. So I'm going to have a go, I've done this before and it's worked quite well in the past. So I'm going to build some solder up on the board. I've just scrape the contact points off with a scalpel just to get it lovely and clean if i can get a blob of solder on each on each spot and then i can just solder the wire on then straight onto the board and i won't have this issue with uh you know the bulb holder coming directly into contact with what is being pushed up against and just snapping the connections off because it's just a bit too fragile that's the problem i think Well, they're certainly on. Will it work? Let's find out. 
need to secure that with something. Let's see what happens. Ah. Well, the offending light that wasn't lighting is now lighting. So I sorted that. Ah, I know what's happened. I haven't plugged them all in. And I'm guessing I've left an earth out by not plugging. I'll plug these in and see what happens. Okay, we're all plugged in. Yes. Success. So that's the that's the engine management light. That's the charging light and that's the oil pressure light. So I've got all three working. Kind of a bit paranoid now about other things not working like my brake fluid low level. I've got an empty spare reservoir. Rather than emptying the brake fluid out, I could just plug it in. And then if that light lights, and I know all my warning lights are all working again. So I've dug my old reservoir out, the spare one, and I've disconnected the reservoir and plugged it into the empty one. Now, of course, now the empty one's plugged in, it should throw up the warning light to show that there's no fluid in the reservoir. I thought that was a very worthwhile little thing to do on this. Yep, works absolutely no problem, which means that I know that all the gauges work as well as they work, and I really don't need to do anything else. I mean, I've got everything working correctly, and I'm happy enough with how the, the GPS Speedo performed in my son's car. You know, can't operate the van, so I also may spit a rev counter in there. I don't know. I mean, of course, I don't really need a rev counter. It'd be nice to know what the revs were, though, at a certain speed, so that might be something I'll do at some stage. But right now, I think my time's best spent on other projects, so that'll do for now. What I will do, though, is I will just tidy these wires up and put it in the trunking so at least I can draw a line under this job and just say well I know it's working for now I finished it off as far as I can and we'll come back to this at a later stage and do some further modifications if I feel like I want to do that I don't know we'll find out There's a guy there getting on an empty bus. This is the main road I pull out onto when I come to work. And normally you'd be lucky to pull out of this junction. If you were turning right, you'd be lucky to come out at all. This is rush hour traffic, guys. Rush hour traffic, one or two cars, that's about it, really. The stones throw from where I live. Nice walk actually, <laughs> makes a change. So yeah, I'm gonna go for a nice walk now. This is right next to a really, really main road. And um, it's a nice, uh, nice countryside to look at. There's some beautiful old properties around here. And up until not that long ago, this was just all fields this side. As you can see, development's taking over now. These are fantastic looking houses, aren't they? And they're jammed in really tight though. There's not much space between them. It's all going on as you can see. It wasn't long ago that this was literally all just fields. Feeling really old now, you know. I can sort of say now, I remember when this all oh, this was fields, like a proper old chap.
I do feel really privileged to live here, just five minutes from this beautiful place with such absolutely fantastic properties and beautiful landscapes to look at. I mean, just look at this. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else, really. There's an old vintage bottle there. I wonder why that's been left there. It's been left there for a purpose, so I'm definitely not going to touch it. So this is Kidnappers Lane. This is undoubtedly one of the nicest spots around this area and um, I'll show you a few houses that are oh, absolutely gorgeous and um, it's just surrounded by sort of open fields they're all a bit swamped around here there seems to be a lot of water lying on the ground and I've noticed how much um, willow is planted everywhere um, I, I kind of from memory willow soaks up water doesn't it so I think what they've done is they've planted a lot of these this is a, a willow, not a very old one, right behind me. Not that old, that one, is it? Some of them are absolutely huge. And uh, I'll zoom in it on that over there. You can see there's a bit of a swamp going on. There's a lot of water lead there, look, and always is. It's just stands in water, these fields just around here. There are a couple of big old thatched roof cottages here. These are really nice. The only tragic thing for me really walking around to places like this is the amount of ground and land that there is just not being used for anything at all. There's loads of like garages and old outbuildings and farm buildings that have just been derelict for, I mean I've been walking around here for 30 years. A lot of these places were sort of abandoned 30 years ago and they're just standing empty now which is just, you know, for me, wanting space all the time, it's just a real frustration to see. Well, thanks very much for watching. Unfortunately, I couldn't show you the speedo working in the van because we're not really supposed to go out unless you're shopping for food or it's an absolute necessity. So that's fair enough. I'll stick to the guidelines. Um, we're allowed out for a, a form of exercise a day anyway. So allowed out. <laughs> Sounds a bit ominous, isn't it? But anyway, um, until next time, I'll say bye for now.